We got a switch. Hold on. We got two switches. So these are some Cisco 2960 X's. I got them from work. They were just sitting on the shelves and since we're not going to be using these anymore, I figured I'd ask to see if I can build a home lab and they were so gracefully nice with me and said, sure, take them home and build your lab and do what you need to do with them. But I still have to return them when it's done, but it doesn't matter. They're not going to use them, so I'll probably have them forever. Uh, but yeah, so these are two 2960X Cisco switches, 48 watts. So let's unbox these and I'm pretty sure you guys probably know how a switch looks but for those that don't know how it looks, let's unbox it and we'll see how it looks with something in the box at least. So we have the power cable. some mounting brackets and that's about it that's all that came in the box and these are brand new switches never used never configured um, and they're not ever going to use them anymore but now we're just taking out these ones actually doing a refresh, taking these ones out and installing some new, uh, what was it, 9606 switches. So some new beefy voice. Um, so yeah, I got these to play around with while I'm studying for my CCNA. And like, you don't really need physical equipment to study for the CCNA, I don't think, in my opinion at least. I don't think you need it, but they were there and so why not? Like packet tracer would be fine just to study and build a lab and I'm probably still going to use packet tracer a lot while building labs and studying but I think I'll get it and bring it home just to show you guys too as well so there we go we have these um, oh that's nice so this one has the newest style uh, console port it also has the RJ45 connector part as well so yeah this is one of the switches so things we're going to need to work with these things we're going to need to work with this switch and build a, a simple lab at home you need the switch you need a laptop or a desktop whichever one you prefer you're going to need a console cable this is a pretty old-fashioned one this is what they had in the warehouse. Uh, it has this old, um, I don't remember what it's called, VGA, the VGA port? I don't know, but it's that kind of pin, whatever. So I needed this uh, adapter that goes to this, and this goes to, let's take it out of the bag. It would probably work better that way. So yeah, this, connects this connects to this like so yeah. but if you have a I was on Amazon I'm probably gonna buy the newer style on console cable because I don't like this old-fashioned thing it's pretty outdated nowadays we don't need this anymore so yeah this is the adapter this end this USB, USB, yeah, USB goes into your laptop. This one goes into the switch. So you plug that in here, and it goes into the USB port on your laptop. And then that's about it. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to upload a config file and basically run some commands and give it a real world feel to setting up a new switch like you would do in the real world like you would do in production so that's what i'm going to do right now is set this up as if we're deploying it in a real enterprise environment so let's do that i don't quite know 
how I'm gonna set these switches up yet. Because this is like my main desk that I use for my work, like coding and stuff on YouTube. And then this is my work laptop that I use for work and I'm gonna be using it for this lab. And I don't know where to put it. Like as you can see, I'm in a different area than where I'm usually at. Usually I'm up in the attic, but winter time came and up there got too cold because there's no heat up there. So I moved everything down here and I don't know, I'm probably gonna move it back upstairs again because it's almost spring now and it's getting hot. So it'll be comfortable up there again for me to do more work and be up there and out of the way. So, but for now, I'm just gonna leave it here. Let's get it plugged in. One thing I always, always, always love with plugging in switches. Ready? Three, two, one. blast off <laughs> so it's gonna be a bit loud but if it were the 9606 that oh 96, sorry the 9300 that we were installing like in different places as soon as you plug it in the fan just goes off like a airplane taking off but these ones are a bit different it took, it took a while but anyway we got that plugged in we got our laptop here let's plug this in I like how it's, in, how it's in the front. Like the other ones, the console port is in the back. So like, when you're trying to get to like the other day in the, in the past video, the last video that I uploaded, having to uh, uh, reset those ones in that tight space, trying to get back there, that was kind of difficult. If it was like this, that would have been great. What I'm going to be using here is putty. It's made so that we can console into it, or if you already have the switch configured and it's live, you can SSH into it, or you can use the less secure way um, by telnetting, which is not recommended. So, for now, we're just going to use the control port. So, we're going to go with putty and select serial. And another thing you'd have to make sure that you do is install the drivers on your machine just to make sure that it works for you. And so, here we go. So, now there's a few ways that you can add a config file to your switch. You can either buy a TFT server, um, a USB flash drive, or you can do it the manual way, which I'm going to do. So what I did, just for testing purposes and for the video, I asked uh, ChatGPT to create a production example config file that most people would usually use to upload to a brand new switch like this, where it has like, some basic configuration. So that's what I did, and I'm just gonna get the configuration from the ChatGPT, and then go through it here and show you guys what it's all about. And then, and <sighs> lovely. But yeah, um, yeah. So I just wanna, I'm just gonna, I'm just going to run through the config file, set it up run through some commands on what you would actually do in a production environment, stuff that I can't do with this particular device. But this particular device, I can't do no advanced um, in um, routing such as PI, GRP, or OSPF, but um, we can do some simple stuff, which that's why I say I'm gonna use um, Packet Tracer, even though I have this. I'm gonna use Packet Tracer on maybe GNSC too, maybe, I don't know yet, but we'll see. But for now, let's just go through this. So now that it's done initializing, we can go ahead and um, console in. Uh, my uh, so this is putty. This is what we're going to use to get access to the um, command line. Uh, what, one thing I would recommend that you do when you're working with putty is first to go to your window and parents and just change the font. Maybe put it to something a little bit bigger because the default font it makes it a little bit hard to, to see stuff in the in the terminal. So that's just one thing that I would recommend doing. And now we just go to session and select serial. And I'm, I'm just, so I'm sure I'm using um, COM port 3, but if we do this, you see, it's not there. It gives us an error. So let's just make sure that you have the 
Recom port um, selected, and then we can go ahead and putty in. Okay. So now we're in the switch, and let's just go to second. Um, all right, so what I want to do is just paste, I forget it first, this config that I got from chat GPT and just paste it in here. I like, I think I have to go to call T, sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So, yep, now we're in global configuration mode. And here we are. Generating. Nice. So I just copied that config file and pasted it. This is like those switches that we were installing the other day. We basically was given the uh, switch for more description. I got some errors in here, that's fine. Um, but basically, what I want to do is I want to open up a notepad and I'm going to sort of paste the config file in here so you can see it. And we just want to go through it and I'll explain what it is that we're actually adding to the switch as far as the um, configuration stuff. So the host name is basically setting the switch's host name. Um, this one here, no IP domain lookup. It prevents the switch from trying to like resolve mistype commands as host names, which could cause a lot of uh, delay. Um, S enable SSH, service password encryption. This basically encrypts all plain text passwords on the config file. Um, IP domain name uh, this sets the domain name and um, it generates keys uh, that you use for SSH um, this one here username this basically is create a username admin with um, privileges set to 15 and the secret set to CCNA IP SSH version 2 enable to SSH I'm not going to go through every line but you get, the, you get the gist of it. Um, so let's go to let see if I have the VLANs. Uh, VLANs, 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 yeah. This right here is just creating the three VLANs, the um, VLAN 10 for data, VLAN 20 for voice and so forth. And this here is creating a switch port trunk on the access switch. So basically putting this, assigning this interface to VLAN 10, 20, and 30, which is going, not assigning, but is allowing the traffic to pass through, sorry. This one here is actually um, adding this interface to VLAN 10. So yeah, that's basically what you would do in a production environment. You get your config file, whether you created it yourself, or most times, like what I did, it was already given to me from the senior network tech. So I didn't have to do anything, but just do that, get the config file, copy it, paste it, whether you're copying and pasting it or using the USB or yeah, either one, you would just get that, upload it here, and then your configuration will be complete. And some things that we had to do um, once we actually configured it, but we, I didn't change the stuff in here. I just went and pasted it to my notepad and changed stuff like the host name the host name that the switch was going to be so we just I'll just do it here but we just host name let's say this is eco switch just change the host name with that and if not, and if you needed to go into the interface it would be this one is uh, one and here we are we are in this interface and we can do a um, no shut and this would actually bring the interface up but we're not going to do that actually the interface is up on switches i think they're up by default so we can do a do this is going to show us all of the interfaces that are actually on the switch and it's going to show their statuses and if they have an ip address assigned to them and so forth so so yeah, and then once you are done doing that, we can do a do show run. And this 
will show us all of the configurations that we added to this um, switch. And I had some errors on here, so I'm not actually going to save it, whatever I did here. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and um, reload it without saving it. But if you needed to re reload this, I mean, if you needed to save this, you would just do a do R. I can just do it because it doesn't matter. But yeah, I'll just reset it. So you do a do right, and this is gonna save the configuration, your running config to your startup config. And yeah, so that's basically it. All right, so that's it. We installed, um, we configured a new Cisco switch. We are the configuration file manually. Um, we did some basic commands that you would use uh, in an enterprise or in a production environment. And so that's basically what I wanted to do in this video. Um, in the next video, we'll do some more stuff uh, in regards to Cisco. Um, maybe the next video that I'm going to release is probably going to be about the app that I'm building, um, Rombi. I know I didn't mention it much in this video, but it's complete to where I can actually show you guys now. So in the next video or the video after that, it's going to be about Rombi, uh, basically me building the app from scratch. And it took me about a month and a half, I would say. Maybe less, but just call it a month and a half. And just want to show you guys that. And as time progresses, I'm probably going to show you guys a bit more about the app, more about Cisco equipment and studying for CCNA. And also, uh, so in my job right now, it's like we have different domains within our uh, department. So you have people that do wireless, uh, more routing and switching, and people mainly focus on uh, firewall. So me, I got thrown into, not thrown, but I chose to go into firewall. So I'm gonna be doing a lot of network security stuff and a lot of firewalls. Uh, I think we use, not something, but we use a checkpoint firewall. So I'm gonna have to learn a lot about that. I'm gonna be going into a course or two for that this coming week or two weeks or so. I'm gonna be doing a course on checkpoint firewalls, an introductory course on checkpoint firewalls. And uh, so yeah, I'm gonna show you guys this whole journey of me being me. A tech person, so <laughs> a tech bro. <laughs> I still sometimes though. But anyway, thanks for watching. If you like the video, please do subscribe. Uh, leave a comment if you're someone that's in the tech industry as well, or you're just getting into tech and wanting to see more about what it's actually like to be a tech person, from software development to networking and system admin, all of that good stuff. So, and I'll see you in the next one.